zkoumat. Peace, everyone. And oh, I said everyone, not everyone. Peace to my practical mystic members. It has been some time since we have came on here and united with our live videos. So I hope you guys are doing well tonight. I hope you guys so far are having a good uh, Gregorian calendar 2021, even though officially um, the New Year's doesn't start until uh, spring equinox, or some people say April 1st. That's debatable, right? But I'm your host, Fifi, the Holistic Gypsy, and I am back coming to you guys with another wonderful video for exclusively for our mystical talks. Um, so tonight, if you don't know, if you didn't get the email, tonight we are talking about something. And before I jump into the title, I do want to say, um, welcome to my new members. Um, I know there's a few couple of new mystic members that have joined um, since we have last meet. So I want to give you a warm, beautiful welcome to the Practical Mystic Club. Whether you're watching the recording or you're here joining us on live. Um, let me see if I can get access to the chat. Okay, we're still working on um, navigating so we can see in the chats, but I'll be checking the comments and stuff afterwards. So yeah, so tonight is the topic is we know better. Why do we struggle to do better? We know certain foods, right? Certain habits, certain people we hang around, even certain jobs, certain family members, relationships. Um, we know it's not serving our highest serving or it's not even serving us anymore, but yet we uh, still endure and we still keep ourselves in these situations. And the question would be like, well, why do we do this, right? You know. Um, so we're gonna be delving into that tonight. Um, so before I really jump in, I do want to read you guys a beautiful poem that is goes right in alignment um, it's actually one of my favorite poems. I came across this poem about, <laughs> let me see. Ooh, it's been a while, about 10, 12 years ago, okay? And when I was back in college, uh, I came across this poem. Um, this poem is very beautiful, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys, okay? And so I'm gonna post that up here, let me see. Can you guys, I hope you guys can see that. Okay. And so this poem is beautiful because again, we know better, but why do we struggle to do better? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking, the, shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make we were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And we let our own light shine. We unconsciously give others, other people permission to do the same. As we are liberating, I'm sorry, as we are liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. This poem is by Marion Williams, Williamson. This is such a beautiful poem. And I definitely wanted to share that with you guys because it goes perfectly in line with the topic for tonight, you know? And so when we go back into that question, well, why are we still eating poor, you know, having, hanging on to poor habits that is obviously, um, deteriorating our body, it's not healthy for us, not serving us. 
Why are we still stuck in relationships when, um, you know, we have bigger plans for ourselves or that relationship is not serving us or we feel like, feel like that relationship is holding us back, but yet we are still clenching onto it, right? Why do we, um, you know, when we, we set certain goals or we know like we need to relocate in a different environment or anything that's conducive to our well-being and our expansion, why are we struggling to take the next steps to actually um, grow and get in alignment to, you know, our higher calling, right? Um, so that poem, as you can see, what it stated was, and I'm going to put it back up. Okay, and what it stated was our deepest fear for us is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. So I definitely wanted to home in on that one because, um, you know, a lot of people, you, you hear, you know, typically it's like, oh, I'm so scared of failing. I'm so scared. And really, I mean, you can only go up from where you currently are. So when, when we say we're scared of failing and we're making a jump to expand ourselves, we're making a jump from our current position. So uh, it's not really the failing part that we're scared of. It, it is, it's more so of what comes next when we do make that jump and we land. <laughs> what comes next is the unknown and the evolution and all the changes and, and really um, all the different um, things and how it shifts the rest of the world. And really, that's what frightens us the most. At least I know that's just what frightens me sometimes, you know? And me being a, a type of perfectionist person, um, you know, I definitely, you know, and I know this is another one. You think that um, sometimes when you know better, but you struggle to do better, it's because in your head, you, you romanticize the idea of what it is to uh, step out and be in alignment to that better part, right? Doing that better part. And you feel like you have to have all your ducks in a row. At least that's how, that's how it is for me, right? And I try to be as, as aligned and as um, well-rounded as I, I can be. But, you know, also one of the things that spirit is working with me is utilize what I have and be in the uh, presence of now, right? And so a lot of times we will procrastinate um, when it comes to when we know better, but um, when we know better, but we struggle to do do better, we procrastinate. We will sit back and, you know, kind of kick the can down the road and say, OK, well, I'm going to wait to next year to start that. Or I'm going to do when we're capable of starting now where I'm going to wait to next week. I'm going to wait, you know, and we do this type of thing um, to really kick it down and delay it, um, because we are, we're in fear because we know once we step into that position, it's going to acquire us and demand for us to definitely, um, be in alignment to that, to keep up with that vibration, if that makes any sense. Um, so I do have a couple of notes just to stay on track with this topic tonight, because as I know with everyone that is a club member here, one of the one, I mean, it's the Holistic Tribe Health and Wellness Club, um, and I know that everyone is committed to some form of level. Um, they're committed to their own growth and their transformation and expansion and healing, and so that is one great initial step: is just putting yourself in a position to get that support, to um, yeah, get that additional support, that additional information, whether that be information, services, um, you know, articles, our video library. Um, you know, our chat groups and our forums and different things of that, the emails and newsletters that you receive. Um, but, you know, outside of that, you may, you know, with, um, you know, when you're trying to transform your life, which obviously all of us are, um, one of the things when it, when it comes to struggling is first, um, first to even know better, you have to be, have some level of self-awareness right you have to have some level of self-awareness and be able to know that there's better in contrast to what you're currently experiencing right and so um you know that comes with being self-aware taking a step back and really observing your life maybe seeing someone else being in a, a different position um seeing someone else reverse age or heal from their fibroids or tumors or cancer or losing weight um, seeing someone's skin look very radiant, they look youthful, young, and vibrant, and you're like, okay, I know what I'm currently doing is not in alignment to 
um, that. So what could I do now to shift? And you have some of those people who will say, well, I couldn't do that. Girl, I like my chicken. Girl, I like my like dairy. I, mm, girl, I like my ice cream. Mm-mm, I like my liquor. I like my cigarettes. You know, and they're, and, and people are kind of in this like loop with these attachments. So one of the things, the reasons why it's really, really hard to give up and we struggle for um, doing better is because of that instant gratification. Um, usually with our habits, you know, it all depends on, it varies on what it is. You know, people have gambling issues, shopping issues, which is one of the things I used to have. Um, sex addictions, porn addictions, um, you know, watching just mindless use, wasting your time watching shows that are not benefiting or enhancing your life or in expanding your mind and cultivating a better mindset. Um, you know, all of these different things we have, we get instant gratification. It helps numb some of our pain, you know, whether it's via food or drugs or medicine or, um, you know, when you buy something, you get that instant gratification because you know your product is either coming now online, right? But you go out, you go buy something, you have it in your hand, you have something tangible right then and there. And so we get addicted to this instant gratification with the Instagram, the Facebook, the online shopping, all the loves and likes that we get when we post something and we put on that so-called mask. Right. Um, because even in the um, poem that I just read in Marion Williams, one of the things she said is like you're doing yourself a disservice and the world a disservice when you're shrinking yourself. And, you know, in one of our practical mystic mystical talks videos, we talked about um, the metaphysics of mask wearing. And we talked about how we mask ourselves and we shrink ourselves a lot of time. And we and a lot of time we're surrounded by people who don't really know us. Half the time we even bury ourselves from ourselves, right? And we're not really um, allowing ourselves to really develop and blossom. One, because when that happens, sometimes when we step into our power and alignment, that comes with a shedding process. So a lot of people around us that we are very grown, very accustomed and um, uncomfortable with having them around us, they um, sometimes when you are, not sometimes, it doesn't necessarily have to be all the times, but you'll start to disrupt some certain people who are uh, have decided not to grow, right? Or they're used to seeing a certain, a certain uh, perception or certain, uh, uh, a certain you, right? You know, and now you're ready to you know, look fly, change your hairstyle, change the way you talk. You know, you're meditating, you listen to positive videos, you eat raw, your skin is glowing, your melanin popping, all of that, you snatched, right? And now you're coming around family members who's used to seeing you when you were down, depressed, angry, agitated, maybe a little sloppy, overweight, weight, um, maybe uh, feeling inferior, inferior to other people or having anxiety or always coming to them for help. And now you're in this space where you have cocooned yourself or you have blossomed. And so it comes with sometimes these people falling off because now they're going to keep reminding you of who you used to be, right? Or and they're mad because they don't recognize the person that made, that they were comfortable with. Now they're uncomfortable, you know? And there's nothing wrong with what you're doing usually, right? And this is what a lot of people do. Like I've even, um, throughout my journey, I've, um, you know, had friends where we've evolved past, where I, I don't even wanna say evolved past, but you know, we want different journeys, should I say, you know? I was going, um, we merged, we came here in the Common Core, we met for some particular reason. And then they are, you know, going this way because that's their way, family, church, religion, you know, the worldly things. And I'm venturing off to this side, the eclectic, artsy, spiritual, holistic health, wellness, <laughs> you know, journey. And, um, you know, I remember when I was on my journey, I've had some people have said, like, you know, they would never tell their family. Um, they couldn't, they didn't fully allow themselves to delve into different aspects of spirituality because they felt like they would be shunned from their family. They will be chastised, uh, ridiculed, um, and their family would, um, you know, isolate them. You know, um, this is something that I've experienced myself. So I've had literally friends that would tell me like, um, you know, their struggle when it comes to that. And I have compassion and understanding for that, but the the beauty of when you step into your true calling and in the walk that is calling you and you answer that call is absolutely liberating and amazing. And I understand it's heartbreaking for um, 
you know, seeing people be disappointed or, um, you know, project their attachments to you as far as like keeping you anchored in one spot and you're ready to grow. And now you feel obligated to stay in this spot because you feel like you abandoned them or you feel like you're leaving them or you feel like um, they'll feel uncomfortable and you, you don't really want to ruffle feathers or feel like you're stepping on anyone's toes. And so this is a common feeling when it comes to, um, you know, knowing better, um, but you're struggling to do better because you're thinking about everyone else that is around you, whether it's your relationships, you know, your children, um, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your colleagues, and th things of that nature. And sometimes it takes stepping out into a new environment, connecting and, and, and expanding your network and meeting new people who do resonate with that journey. Um, and that is a, that is a, a opportunity cost that is not always a, a guarantee, but usually it's a very common thing. A lot of people on this journey um, usually, um, you know, you get to a space where first you're upset, you try to convince your family to join you, right? <laughs> um, they're they're not with it. They don't understand. It's, it's they realize, you know, you shortly then quickly realize it's, your walk is for you. And um, this is something I do want to remind you, your walk is for you. Not everyone, when you go on your journey um, of knowing better and doing better, doing better is doing better for you. It's not always doing better for other people. And sometimes we do ourselves a disservice when we're trying to carry everything with us rather than us stepping out into our power, stepping in and walking by faith and being that first person around our, you know, our so-called environment to be the pioneer and step out into something unknown where you don't really see that in your circle. And you never know um, the end goal. They, other people may be very inspired to go, but a lot of times usually we want company. We say, hey, join us now instead of stepping out first and fully um, blossoming into that power and fully embracing that new journey um, when it comes to, um, you know, I have a lot of people who um, is into veganism, veganism and plant-based uh, and high raw foods, different things, by the way, but like, you know, you have a lot of people who's into veganism or alkaline food and they're constantly trying to pull people with them and just demonize and become very dogmatic to people who are still in religion or still in, um, uh, and I'm using these for example, but, you know, I'm sure, you know, whatever is that is far as your transformation or what you're looking to do, excuse me, what you're looking to do, whether it's healing yourself, your new diet and different things like that. Um, you know, this is usually the hardest part for a lot of people because a lot of, you know, that's one of the heaviest because we have an emotional attachment to people. Right. Um, but when you're in this stage of some people want to like, kind of force their people, you know, to come with them on this journey. And that usually backfires and creates some friction um, and discord sometimes within that family or that circle, because now you're, you're, you're kind of like new or a teenager at this stage and you're kind of like rebelish. So you're kind of like demonizing them and looking down on them or, you know, and that type of thing instead of fully embracing your journey. So it's like you have half of your foot in the old version of you and half your foot in the new version and you're trying to drag the new, you know, drag everyone with you. And that's not all um, necessary. That's not necessary to do. So one of the things when you are, you do know better um, is actually fully stepping into that uh, direction of knowing better and, and aligning with that and implementing that. And um, just worry, you know, you know, it says like save yourself first, right? And fully um, walk on that walk. And then people will genuinely and gradually gravitate towards you when you're fully blossoming and in alignment to what you're doing and you're doing it for you. Um, so that is one of one also that um, when, when you know better, you do better, but you struggle to do better. That's why emotional attachments, the instant gratification, um, um, having and another thing is um, energetic leakages, you know, so with some of our habits, we habits, relationships and things that we still try to bring on into this new paradigm that we're moving into um, when we know better, um, we realize, well, at least I do 
that you'll have energetic leakages. Like you'll realize that some of the habits you're going to have to also tweak as well in order to uh, transmute some of that energy into this new you, into the new um, direction that you're going into. So you may have to cut off of the gossiping um, video videos you used to watch or, you know, love and basketball, I don't know, soap operas or, um, um, you know, uh, budget your time with certain people, you know, talking to people who's, who the conversations are not really um, productive or um, balanced, should I say. This may be like gossiping and just, um, you know, put you in a state where you, you know, you're in your old frame of mind that's not serving you. So you have to evaluate these things and, you know, look at what is it that is creating this, you know, um, I don't have this time. You know, a lot of people like you start meditating, right? Because we all know how um, how beneficial meditation is. And if you don't, I definitely will be doing a video about that um, in the future. But um, just for example, meditation, um, a lot of us will say, oh, I don't have the time. But yet we'll be scrolling on Facebook and Instagram all the time, right? Um, we'll take our phone to the bathroom and scroll. Um, and we'll, we'll have all these other unhealthy habits that are not serving us. But we will tell ourselves we don't have the time. When, not, when we do have the time, then the same goes with the um, people who, a lot of people who have made, make the excuses. So we'll make these excuses, right? Because it's very comfortable to be comfortable and to remain comfortable. It's no challenge. So um, naturally, instinctively, that's usually what, um, unless you're in a very contrasting situation, dire situation, or something that kind of propels you to move forward, you're going to, you know, really excuse yourself to stay stagnant in your life. Um, so, you know, peeling back those um, unhealthy habits that are serving you, um, you know, putting yourself in a new environment, getting the actual support, um, whether that be online, in person, um, you know, certain events or clubs or associations that you need to join to help get, put you in a new uh, frame of thought and mind frame and getting that support in that um, you know, eliminating and budgeting your time with people who are not serving you, who's not going to support you in this journey and definitely putting more energy and time into the direction and walk into the um, person you're looking to be. Um, so, um, when it comes to your emotions, you have to understand your emotions is predicated upon your perceptions and your mental process, your mental thought process. So, you sometimes have to reroute that, you know, whether it's so journaling is also a very good journaling and meditating. Um, and um, I'm actually in a sister circle group myself. And another thing um, one of my um, sisters has suggested was actually um, recording yourself talk when you're, you know, high off your emotions and rambling. So sometimes for people who's not really into writing, I personally like writing. I hear myself talk too much throughout the day. I'm very expressive. So for me, I don't really care to hear myself <laughs> in the audio, but that may work for someone else. You can hear your frame of thought. You can hear your tone. You can hear your attitude. And that can just help you reevaluate and reshift to, um, you know, just reprogram yourself, right? But first, you got to be self-aware, right? And that was um, in the beginning of this video is what I was stating was, um, you know, when you know better, um, in order to even know better, you have to have a level of self-awareness. Um, so that is um, another thing, like I said, um, really focusing, homing in on the mental aspect of ourselves because we are multidimensional. We do have multiple aspects to ourselves, okay? So um, let's see. A huge, a huge one. Um, so yeah, so energetic leakages, you know, so um, a lot of those old habits, we're going to definitely have to eliminate or transmute that energy into adding new, healthier habits to help um, make many micro steps uh, throughout that day um, to rewire ourselves to put our energy in alignment, our actions in alignment and our thoughts in alignment, right? So in order for us to have healthier and better vibration as um, far as emotions, we have to have a better and mental, um, better and healthier mental perceptions of what's taking place and have a better attitude towards that. So one of the things also might help is just like writing down the benefits of what you will gain when it comes to 
what you're trying to change, what you know better to do, whether it's your food habits, losing weight, your health habits, um, you know, uh, money, uh, getting a new job, budgeting, different things of that. So these are things to write down. I'm actually going to do um, a video dealing with um, our, on a topic of goal setting. So we'll delve more into different steps there and I'll be more structured for those. Um, and I'll use certain things on, as an example. So that would uh, help out with our mystics members as well. Um, another huge thing when it comes to us knowing better um, but struggling to do better is not clarifying our why. Um, so, you know, you have your why. Your why should definitely be rooted in you. But you need to have a why that's bigger than you sometimes, right? Um, just like we went into the video. I'm sorry, we went into that poem. I just, again, I'm going to bring that poem back up. And give me one second. Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make and manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And we let our own light shine. We unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we liberate, as we liberate it, I'm sorry, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others, okay? So your why, um, so your why is definitely should be, you should definitely be trans, uh, um, you should definitely uh, shift for, you know, rooted in you, but your why should be bigger than you, right? Because sometimes, um, you know, while we're in a certain process, um, it should be anchored in you, but just know that your life is not, it's like your life is not just for you. You live, um, everything is interconnected, like your story, your journey, your contrast. Um, just like in the um, poem, it says, you shrinking doesn't do anyone, a, a, does, you know, it does everyone a disservice. It does you a disservice, everyone else around you, because now you're um, allowing everyone to be comfortable, right? And we're not challenging each other to expand beyond um, and to live in such a different paradigm. Can you imagine everyone who fully walked into their power, into their greatness? Like what, like I, what would this look like, right? What would this look like if less people wasn't operating from a place of fear and shame and guilt, right? Um, and and, and, and self-suppression and self-denial because we have a lot of people operating from here. Um, a lot of people in this world before this whole pandemic happened couldn't stand their jobs. I mean, you know, that's why they're out here trying to be the mass police to other people, right? Um, because they prefer, in a, and, and to each their own, but you have people who really didn't like their life prior to the so-called pandemic. So they are enjoying this stage, but also don't have any sense of direction on where to go. And those people are looking up to people, waiting for certain people to get in alignment to be their great person to inspire them, those people. And that person is you. you know. So when you step into your power, you inspire other people to step into that power and so on, right? And that's that uh, butterfly or ripple effect type of situation. And so um, your why should definitely be anchored and you should change and transform for yourself, but know that the world is watching you, period. You know, and your story and, and the contrast and the struggles of life, right? Even your struggle of, of, of getting from um, point A to point B is not just to ponder on, well, I know better. Knowing is not enough. You have to, and I say that all the time in my household because I have a lot of Aquarian energy here that I live with. So one of their mantras is I know, right? And I always like to say, knowing is not enough. Uh, you must actually implement what you know, utilize what you know, you know? get in alignment and, and be what you know, right? And that's when you activate and you are in alignment of your power, right? And everything will shift, period, from there, right? You know, because we live in the age, especially now, we live in the age of the Aquarius age where everyone knows, right? You have a lot of so-called information, disinformation, 
just being spewed on the internet, right? And so uh, sometimes it's hard to decipher what's true and what's not the true and use discernment on that. But it's, um, but it's another thing when um, one of the things you can decipher from the truth is when someone's empowering you, when someone is not trying to tell you what to do, but um, tell you to be who you truly are and is, is centering you back into your power. You know, so they're not trying to take the power and, and dogmatize it and drag you to this direction and this direction. It's there to liberate you and activate the power that is within, which is in all of us, right? A lot, but a lot of us are sleeping and the ones who are here, especially here at Holistic Tribe Health and Wellness Club, uh, whether you are a gypsy member, um, sorry, a mystic member or a um, holistic tribe member, um, whether you are here or not, this is, you're activated, I mean, you're activated enough in a state where you are ready to uh, walk in your greatness, right? And so you're going to help activate other people. So this is also sometimes what we fear, right? We fear to uh, wake up the sleeping consciousness of the world, right? We do fear that we are more powerful beyond measure. And... Um, so let's see, what else do I have here in my notes? Um, so yeah, your why, just know that, you know, um, we're here for each other, you know? The more I tell my story, more it's, it's, it inspires other people, you know? So when I go through my struggle, it's not there to call out the characters of my story because at the end of the day, I'm just the character of the story. And I always like to, you know, say, even like in the Bible and religion, it's not the characters that we should be praising, it's the essence of the message. And um, that is the part that humans get twisted. And so we are here being used, all used by God, whether you're the villain or the hero, the savior or the savage, right? <laughs> um, we are all different characters uh, showing the energetic transfer and the harmonization, right? And the power and the um, mysticism, right? The unknown and the un unpredictability uh, and the un um unlimited, the omnipresence, right? And so when we fully step into our power and we do what is, is, uh, is it seated in us to do, right? Despite, you know, um, you know, and that's another thing, us scared to step into the unknowingness um, is like, I don't know what that looks like, right? You have one step or one part, right? But you don't know the bigger picture, right? And so um, sometimes you need to just get more in alignment to get more of the bigger picture. But at the same time, we're all like pieces to a masterpiece, you know, and we're the masterpiece of God. And so we're little pieces. Right. And so sometimes it takes a step back in another round to see the bigger piece. But regardless, trust and do what you know is going to serve you and everyone else around you. Um, whether that, you know, is shifting your health, you know, if you're the first one in your family stepping out when it comes to shifting your health, which, which I was, you know, my, my, my birth mother was morbidly obese, you know, and had a, a, a rack of health issues, you know, and she passed away two years ago and um, she didn't even get to reach. Um, she, you know, she, she was still young, should I say rather. And, um, you know, a lot of people in my family uh, do have uh, weight issues and stuff like that. So for me, that's obviously not an issue for me. Why? Because I made it up in my mind it wasn't going to be. Um, and I, I, I know that comes, <laughs> that sounds as more simpler than put, but I, one, had the opportunity to not be surrounded by them to perpetuate the same thing. So that was one thing that made it easier for me, right? Two, um, I did the work and um, got the support. You know, I went and went to events, you know, network, hung around people, you know, studied, um, got my certifications and different things of like that to really put me in a state where, you know, I, I was on a different path, you know, was I am on a different path. And, you know, you may slip up, but definitely you can pick yourself back up and get back in alignment. So, yes, your why must be bigger than you because sometimes you want to give up on yourself, you know. So sometimes it may be difficult. You want to give up on yourself. Sometimes you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to get out of bed for yourself. But you get out of bed for the fact that the world needs you. You know, if you have that mindset and it's not that you're saving, but you're a piece to the puzzle, the world needs you, you know, and of course you have your time where you need to just really rest. That's the best one part that I'm working on as well is fully um, staying in tune and staying in balance um, with myself and not overworking. Right. 
um, and not overexerting and exhausting myself because how can I be great if I'm exhausted and I'm depleted? How can I pour into other people? Um, so, um, yeah, and then that balance, and, and that's another one um, when we know better, do better, is um, struggling with being like being like you know when you have like a ball you're walking on a little ball you're trying to balance all that energy right we have different aspects to ourselves and so you know we might have some type of emotional triggers that we may have to work on right um and so the thing is we also think that it looks a certain way too um we think that um we have to be perfect we think it's a linear type of thing when um Life is holistic and it's very rhythmic, you know, and life fluctuates, you know. And so when we're on this journey, we try to be a perfectionist and think that we're not going to have that time when we're waddling and we feel like we're kind of having some type of discord. We get out of alignment. And so we give up and we feel like we're not worthy. And so that's another big thing when it comes to we know better, but we struggle to do better is our sense of worthiness. Right. Um, so working on worthiness, doing affirmations, meditation, positive videos, getting a, a health coach or health um, a support, um, getting people around you that are very loving and supporting. And their cup is one of over to pour into you and they're making space for you so they can pour in their best into you. Right. Because um, sometimes if we're around old energy and stagnant energy and energy that is hurt, hurt people, hurt people but heal people, heal other people, and uplift other people. So, um, yeah, so clarifying your why, mental perception, emotional, energetic blockages, addictions to instant gratification, um, lack of accountability. So this is another one that we're, um, <laughs> is um, a lot of people don't really want to step out into their power because you know, other people will hold them accountable once they do announce or have um, put certain titles or uh, branded, rebranded themselves or call themselves as such, right? People, you know, usually when it comes to, they said there's like three stages of the truth. One is like getting ridiculed. The other one is, um, I forgot the other stage, but then the other one is like acceptance of the third stage. So, you know, you, you see these heroic, uh, what is called these heroic walks of, um, I forgot was like hero, the hero walk, the hero path. And, you know, a lot of those um, past, like Christ-like consciousness that came on the planet and reincarnated and stuff, they, they have been ridiculed and chastised and um, isolated from the majority of the worldly people. And so just understand that um, you have to get more rooted into your spiritual core and know your why, right? Know your why is bigger than you, right? And definitely know that you're doing also is coming from you, you're doing it for you, but you're here to um, change the world or shift the world. So a lot of times, um, you know, we're scared to hold ourselves accountable to that, right? Because that comes with us self-reflecting and doing that inner shadow work and really going through that cocooning stage and going through that transmutation stage and that um, rise of the phoenix type of, from the ashes type of energy. Um, but that comes with every one journey when it comes to that. And so not being scared of that, fully stepping into your power, because that doesn't look the same for everyone, right? Depending on what it is that you're looking to um, do better in, right? So embracing that inner knowingness, embracing that, right? And, you know, definitely that procrastination part comes with also being accountable and comes with willpower. So, you know, I have the program Will to Wellness, um, detoxification and healing program. And um, will, the willpower is um, the energy, you know, you hear people saying they're strong will. That's the type of person that's, that is going to, it's a momentum, it's an energy that is like, you know, that have, comes with force, the will of God, right? So we have the will of God that is within us, that is seated in each individual of, of, of us. And this will of God is um, not imposing or inflicting on other people. This will of God is for us to shine and radiate our, um, our light and be this... Um, I can't say particularly what it is to be, but it's to shine in our own particular unique way. 
And a lot of us, um, when it comes to that willpower, a lot of us lack discipline, right? We lack discipline, we lack focus. And so this is what's missing when it comes to using that willpower that, that's coming from that solar plex energy and that um, is actually transmuting the, and I don't want to say you lack, you don't lack it half the time. Like I said, the energetic leakage is, is being leaked somewhere else, right? Your attention span, you're scrolling on your phone, you have all these other unhealthy habits that is draining your energy. So you have to go, go back to that, collect yourself, right? And take that energy that you were leaking in other places and you were draining yourself in, right? And it wasn't serving you. Eliminate that, close those doors, right? And take that energy and open the new door, right? And, and push yourself through that new door. And that is that willpower, that momentum energy. And so that is key to this. And so when you shut those doors, now you can have your focus on where you're headed at rather than split your energy split and uh, diverted into these other aspects that are not serving you and holding you back and creating unhealthy entanglements. Um, so yeah, and then, then you have the lack of structure. So planning and organizing, right? So writing down what your expectations and what would it look like, what would it feel like to be in this better state or be in, whether it's an experience, whether you're transmuting and um, transforming yourself, vision, visualize yourself there. So write as much detail as you can and get clarity on this, whatever form of way you need to do that, that is major key. Um, because this is why if you don't do this, you don't have clarity, right? So, you know, inquiring and doing meditation, having that alone time, Tuning out and closing some of these unhealthy doors will, again, bring your energy back and collect yourself to center yourself to really get more clarity so you can have more, get more vivid with your details, know why, why you're doing it. You know, knowing your why is bigger than you know that when you step in your greatness, you are serving the world and others around you. Right. Um, so know the importance of um, you being in alignment to your better and best self and doing better and creating and planning, right? And so you can't plan everything, right? Um, so this will come with that goal setting um, video that we'll be doing in the near future. So that will help with the uh, structure and just really kind of, you know, going into the magic of goal setting and stuff like that. But yeah, so in eliminating anything that's emotionally triggering you and work on that, you know, so um, like I said, meditating is super, super duper key for multitudes of reasons. Um, because then you could be more aware of all the, you could start being more aware of your energetic um, leakages, right? Um, you will be less reactionary and more responsive and more present. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, I'm trying to think, have I thought of any other um, other ways we can, we struggle to do better, but these, um, all these different things mentioning, you know, just step out and definitely, uh, you know, whatever it is that you, you know, have as far as your goals for us 2021, and we are still in the first quarter, um, definitely um, speak power and life into whatever it is that you aim to do. Um, and not only that, start utilizing wherever you currently are to inch towards that, right? So maybe you may not have the money, right, right now, or I don't even want to say what you don't have. I don't want to even speak that, speak that lackness energy. But... If you're planning to move, start getting boxes, packing up the stuff that you don't even deal with or start eliminating, downsizing your stuff, cleaning out your closet or as um, far as foods, um, start substituting healthier foods and fruits and smoothies. And, you know, I made videos earlier today and I have um, detoxification support videos that has been, you know, um, growing. So if you have Obviously, all you guys are members. You could check that out. There's the growing video content there. So, you know, start taking the initiative to uh, kind of immerse yourself as much as you can into that direction. 
whether it's watching videos about it, mentally getting yourself prepared, meditating, making the space, right? Eliminating certain habits and people and things that are just not serving you so you can get that clarity and get recollect that energy that has been, you know, where those energetic leakages and blockages are. So clearing that out the way, you could start there. And then, um, you know, getting yourself more and more in alignment with the actions and stuff like that. So know that this is a common struggle, first of all, but just because it's a common struggle, do not settle just there. Keep moving forward. Keep taking the initiative and uh, will yourself into uh, being better, doing better. And um, yeah, transmuting and transforming your life. So I hope this video was helpful. <clears throat> need some water. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful and insightful. I look forward to your comments and um, I thank you guys for watching and um, yeah, I see you guys in the next mystical videos. I will be sending out a newsletter very, very soon to you guys. And again, welcome to all my new members that have joined um, the Practical Mystics Club and uh, definitely, if you've been enjoying membership, let other people know. I am a small, you know, business owner, so I prefer word of mouth. Word of mouth is the most powerful marketing uh, tool because that way I know that you guys are enjoying the content. If you have any other ideas or comments or anything to add, um, please write that in the comments on the form um, in our um, Practical Mystic section. So have a good night. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.